Okay, today's video is entitled AC Capacitive Reactants Part 4, and in this video we're going to go over circuit analysis for a series RC circuit. This is the circuit we have. We have a resistor and a capacitor, so we have an RC circuit, and we have a time-varying voltage source. And the problem says here we have a 150 ohm resistor and a 15 microfarad capacitor. They are placed in series, and they're connected to a 230 volt source, and the frequency of that source is 50 5 hertz. Now in this video we're going to draw the phasor diagram for the impedance and calculate the impedance. We're going to determine the current through the circuit. We are going to determine the voltage drops across the resistor and the capacitor and we are going to draw the phasor diagram for the voltage and determine the angle phi, the phase angle. Okay, before we start I just want to point out that I didn't specify whether this is the peak or the RMS voltage for the source. So you want to be careful that you don't mix those up and maybe you need to convert one to the other before you begin, but look at the problem you have and are you asked for the peaks or are you asked for the RMSs, okay? Now here we go, let's start. This is the information that we were given and this is what we're gonna do in the first slide here. I'm gonna draw the phasor diagram and determine the circuit impedance. Now the impedance for the circuit we can calculate using this equation that Z, the impedance is equal to the square root of R squared plus the capacitive reactance squared. Now, in order to calculate the impedance or to draw the phasor diagram, we need to know the capacitive reactance. We don't know the capacitive reactance, so we're simply going to do that first. The capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 times pi times f, the frequency times c, the capacitance of the capacitor. We can just plug the values in because we're given those two values, the frequency and the capacitance. That's just 2 times pi times 55 hertz times 15 times 10 to the minus 6 farads because the capacitance of our capacitor is microfarads and 10 to the minus 6 is micro. That means that the capacitive reactance is 193 ohms. Now, we know the resistance. We know the capa react capacitive reactance, so we can dr calculate the impedance or draw the phasor diagram, which we're going to do that first. The vector representing the resistance is drawn typically along the positive x-axis. The vector representing the capacitive reactance typically is drawn along the negative y-axis. So this is our phasor diagram for the impedance. Now in order to calculate the impedance, we're just going to add these two values up because the impedance is the sum of all the oppositions to current in our circuit. Now we have just one resistor and one capacitor. So when I add those two vectors up, I can represent that graphically by adding them up using the head to tail method. And then I can draw the addition of the sum of those two vectors as represented by that vector, which is Z, the impedance, and the length of this vector represents the magnitude of the impedance. Now you can see we have a right triangle here, so we can just use the Pythagorean theorem. That's what this is, A squared plus B squared is c squared, and then I took the square root of both sides. So we're going to plug the values in now. The impedance is equal to the square root of 150 squared plus 193 squared, and that means the impedance of that circuit, of our circuit, is 244 ohms. Okay? This is a right triangle. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the length of the hypotenuse. Okay? Now this is obviously a mathematical solution to the impedance, and this is simply a graphical representation of the impedance of that circuit. I tried to draw these two vectors to scale. This is 150 you know, ohms long, and this one's a little longer. It's 193 ohms, okay? Okay, the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna determine the current through the circuit. I brought the impedance with us because we're gonna need that. We're gonna use Ohm's law, V equals I times R, but we write it typically like this, V equals I times Z because we're going to use not just the resistance, but we're going to use the impedance, which is the sum of all the current oppositions to current flow. That means I is equal to, the current is equal to the voltage divided by the impedance. That means the current is equal to 230 volts divided by 244 ohms. And when we do the math, we get the current is 0 0.94 amperes. Now this is what I was talking about at the beginning. I didn't specify whether this is the RMS or the peak voltage. If this is the RMS voltage, then this is the RMS current. If this is the peak voltage, then this is the peak current. Okay? So please be aware of those and don't mix those up like I was saying. 
Okay, now we're going to calculate, um, the, we're going to determine the voltage drop across the resistor and the capacitor. We're going to do that simply by using Ohm's law, V equals I times R, which is the current times the resistance, which we get 144 volts for the resistor. Now we can do the same thing for the capacitor, but we can use the capacitive reactance, and that tells us that the voltage drop across the capacitor is 182 volts. Now we already know the voltage of the source is 230 volts. But we can just check that, and I'd like to kind of do as many checks as I can, so we can check that and calculate the voltage across the source as the current times the impedance. You can see here we have resistors, resistance for the resistor, capacitive reactance for the capacitor, and for the total voltage we use the total opposition of the current flow, which is the impedance, and if we do that we get 230 volts. So this value matches this value, and that tells me that I probably calculated these values correctly. Now another thing I'd like to point out is that according to Kirchhoff's laws, which should apply to this circuit, or do apply to this circuit also, the sum of the voltage drops should equal the voltage gains. Now you'll notice if you add these up, you actually get 323, which is more than 230, but these are time varying values. All three of these values are changing over time because we have an AC voltage source. But at any point in time, these two values will be equal to this value because according to Kirchhoff, the sum of the voltage drops has to equal the voltage gain. Okay, I just want to point that out. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to determine the phase angle phi and we're going to draw the phasor diagram for the voltage. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the phasor diagram. The voltage, the, rep, the vector representing the voltage across the resistor because that's in phase with the current and we typically draw the current along the positive x-axis, then this voltage vector is also along the positive x-axis. The voltage across the capacitor is out of phase and lags the current by 90 degrees in a capacitive circuit, so therefore we draw the vector representing the voltage across the capacitor along the negative y-axis. Now once again, I tried to draw these to scale. This should be of like represent 141 volts. This is 182. It's a little longer. So this is the phasor diagram for the voltage. Okay. Now in order to calculate the angle phi, we're going to add these two values up once again. Okay. So we add them head to tail. We draw the sum. Now that vector represents the voltage of the source, which should be 230 volts. This angle phi is the angle by which the voltage of the source lags the current. Remember, voltage resistor, they're in phase, voltage current, they're out of phase by 90, so we have an RC circuit. So the voltage across, the voltage of the source should lag the current by somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees when we combine those two. Now, once again, I know this is maybe a little bit done. I'm just going to check the voltage of the source using this equation once again. The Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is c squared. We should get that the value of the source is 230 volts, which we do. Okay, I'd just like to check that one more time. Now, we're going to do calculate phi, the angle between the voltage and the current, and we're going to do that using one of our trig functions. Typically, it's done with the tangent function because we were given that we know this we know this originally so we can use the tangent because the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent you could also use the sine of the cosine because we know the length of this side also okay but we want to calculate this angle phi opposite adjacent tangent that means that arc tangent of phi is equal to 182 over 141 and that tells us that phi the voltage, the angle that the voltage lags the current is 52 degrees in this circuit. Okay? So, I think we did everything we wanted to do for that problem. Okay? I hope you found that helpful. I tried to go through everything step by step. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.